everyone in this video we are going to answer a question that is why isn't the moon falling towards the earth now we see so many things falling towards the earth right the things which are around the surface of the earth but we do not see the moon falling towards the surface of the earth now what's the reason behind it why isn't uh, why isn't falling towards earth or why it is orbiting towards earth always so we will be finding to uh, answer to all these questions in this particular video so let's get started now first of all we'll start with an activity wherein we have to whirl a stone which is tied to a string now uh, we need to uh, hold the other end of the string and just whirl it now when we do that the stone moves around the hand in a circular path now the stone describes a uniform circular motion when whirled as shown in the figure here now when the string is released suppose you release the string or the string breaks in between then what happens it no longer continues to move in the same uniform circular motion it flies away with a linear motion or in a straight path now why is it so why what what is the factor that keeps it revolving around the hand and when it is released what disappears so that it flies off in a straight line now that is the force it is a kind of force with about which we will be learning in this video so let us have a top view, top view of the situation now the stone is having a motion something which is like this in a circular path with its center somewhere here where your hand is there now the direction of the stone in uh, every point at every point in this circular motion keeps on changing and that is the reason why even if it has the same constant speed throughout the motion its velocity changes because velocity is a vector quantity which encompasses both speed and direction and if any one of these things change then there will be a change in velocity so here the velocity of the stone changes at every point of this circular path now whenever there is a change in velocity there will be acceleration and that's for sure right because acceleration comes from change in velocity whether it's a decrease or increase it doesn't matter but there will be an acceleration whenever there is a change in velocity so this stone is constantly accelerating throughout this circular path now whenever there is acceleration we know that acceleration comes only out of an application of force whenever there is a force there will be an acceleration if there is no force there won't be any acceleration in other words if there is no force acting on a body here then the body would move with the same speed and same direction throughout but since this body is changing its velocity it's it has acceleration so there must be a force which acts on it and which keeps this body rotating around its this uh, the center of the circular path so what's that force that force is what we call as the centripetal force now centripetal force is uh, is the is a kind of force which keeps this body in uniform circular motion and it prevents this body from flying away with a straight in a straight line with a constant speed now whenever uh, the string is released or the string breaks this centripetal force is lost or it disappears and that is the reason why it no longer continues to move in the same uniform circular motion but it starts moving in a linear path or a straight path and flies off now the centripetal force is what keeps the body moving in this circular path that is what we have concluded or from all this discussion now when we take the case of uh, when we take the case of the moon and the earth we see that the moon orbiting towards the uh, around the earth continuously now are the two situations similar yes they are similar now even in that case there is a centripetal force like that of the stone which is directed towards the center of this circular path even if the stone is somewhere here the centripetal force is directed towards the center even if the stone is somewhere here the centripetal force is again directed towards the center along the radius at that particular point similarly at any point on this circular motion 
the stone has a centripetal force which is directed towards the center. Now where from the centripetal force has come? The centripetal force is the force which our hand supplies while whirling it. So it comes from our hand that is at the center. Now when the stone is released, it moves in a straight direction since the centripetal force disappears. Now it moves in a direction of the velocity which it has at that, per that particular point when it was released. So the velocity is along a tangent to this circular path and it's, it's also perpendicular to the centripetal force. So the velocity is along the tangent and when the stone is released, it moves along the tangential direction to this circular path. Now let's come to the case of, of the earth and the moon. Now even in that case, this centripetal force is the one which keeps the moon moving around the earth in a in and around circular path. Now where from the centripetal force coming in that case? Now the force that is directed from the moon towards the center of the earth is what we call as the gravitational pull of the earth. So the centripetal force in that case is supplied by the earth's gravitational pull on the moon because of which it keeps on revolving around the earth in a circular path, in a more or less circular path. Now to understand this better, let us do a thought experiment. Now what is a thought experiment? Now this experiment is what we uh, conduct in our thoughts. We don't generally go and conduct the experiment with our hand or in a realistic way. It is just our thought experiment for that matter. So what we are going to do is, in our thoughts, we are going to climb up this, the highest building in our area and then we'll drop a ball from that top of this building. Then what happens is the ball after some time hits the ground like this. Now this ball has covered only the vertical distance which is exactly equal to the height of this building and it has not covered any horizontal distance because we have not supplied any horizontal velocity to it. Now let's do the same activity by supplying a horizontal velocity or by throwing it with a certain velocity. Now when we do that, this body or the ball moves a certain distance and falls a little away from the building. But it has covered the same vertical distance now which is equal to the height of the building. But there is also a horizontal distance in this case. Now when we repeat the experiment with a larger velocity, let's see what happens. Now when we increase the horizontal velocity, the horizontal distance that the body covers or the ball, ball covers increases. But the vertical distance that it covers remains the same which is equal to the height of the building. Now when we go on increasing the horizontal velocity, let's see what happens. Now when we throw it with a very very large velocity and we can do and we can throw the ball with such velocity only in our thoughts. We cannot do it uh, with our, by ourselves. So let's do it in our thoughts and see what happens. Now when we throw it in that manner with a very large speed, then what happens? It lands somewhere away from, much away from the uh, building, where the building is located. Now it looks some li somewhat like this. Now here it has covered a vertical distance or, uh, as well as a horizontal distance. Now this horizontal distance is much much more as compared to the vertical distance which is the height of the building. Now here one thing that you may notice is that it has covered not the same vertical distance but the vertical distance has also increased in that case. Now why does it happen? It happens because of the curvature of the earth. If the earth was flat, we would have not seen any kind of increase in the vertical distance. But since the earth is curved, we see an increase in the vertical distance since the surface was curving out when the ball was about to reach the ground. So this is the extra vertical distance that the ball has covered to hit the ground. So the reason behind this is that the earth is curved and as the ball traveled out that particular distance to hit the ground, 
the earth was the surface of the earth was curving out under now let us try to increase the velocity and see what happens now when we increase the velocity then it would land somewhere further away from the building with a larger horizontal distance and even with an increased extra vertical distance that the ball travels so this is the extra vertical distance covered by the ball and it is much larger as compared to the previous case now the reason behind this is the same that when the ball was attempting to hit the ground the earth the surface of the earth was curving out underneath so that's the reason why it hits the ground with a larger vertical distance now let's say we throw the ball with a, an even higher speed or further higher speed then what happens it lands up some it will land up somewhere here it will again increase its horizontal distance and also the vertical distance is much more increased in this case as you can see here so this is the extra vertical distance that the ball has covered and for the same reason that the earth was earth was curving out underneath when the ball was about to hit the, the hit the ground now in this case even it tries to hit the ground and in all other cases that we looked before the ball was in, in an attempt to hit the ground because of the force of gravity that pulls it towards the center of the earth now when we go on increasing the speed further then what happens it would miss its target of hitting the ground every time it rot it tries to fall down now that makes it revolve around the earth like this now every time it tries to hit the target or hit the ground it always misses the ground now that's because the earth's surface is curved this is the only reason why it always misses its target to hit the ground and that makes it revolve around the earth like this so any body which is revolving around the earth is always falling towards the earth but in that attempt it misses the ground always in an attempt to hit the ground it always misses the target and it ends up completing the whole orbit and then it starts a new orbit in the same attempt attempt to hit the ground but again it misses the target to hit the ground and completes the orbit and that's the same thing which happens with the moon which is orbiting around the earth so the moon from this experiment thought experiment we conclude that the moon is always trying to fall towards the earth but it's not hitting the ground because the earth is curved or it's spherical in shape and the moon always misses its target to hit the ground and that's the reason why it is it keeps on revolving around the earth in a more or less circular orbit like this now the force that keeps it revolving around the around uh, this earth in a circular orbit is again the centripetal force which is supplied by the gravitational pull of the earth now this centripetal force is again directed towards the center of the earth and acts along the radius of this circular orbit and similarly at any point in its motion the centripetal force will be directed towards the center of the earth so the motion of the moon around the earth is due to the gravity the centripetal force which is supplied by the gravitational force of the earth on moon now if there were no such force for example if we imagine that this gravitational force which earth exerts on to moon disappears some day then what will happen it is the similar condition when we release the string or the string breaks now what will happen the moon will fly off in a straight line as was done by the stone when we release the string so this case is quite similar to the case of whirling a stone when the stone was released the stone flies off in a straight line and when this force is taken off gravitational force of the earth on the moon is taken off then the moon will also perform the same thing that is it will fly off in a path which is tangential to that path in that point of time so with this we have answered the question that is why the moon is not falling towards the earth that is actually it is falling towards the earth 
but it always misses the target. It is always falling towards the center of the earth, but without hitting the ground. So that will be the answer to our question. And I hope the answer was justifiable to you and it was understandable to you. Thanks for watching. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.